I'm going to tell you some of the ways the universe will end. They're not going to end in your lifetime. In that case, I take it back. All right, right. So let me give you some scenarios that are on the docket. Okay. Okay. As you may know, we are currently expanding. Yes. All right. That's right. Growth, damn it. And <laughs> as we expand, the universe gets thinner and thinner, mm. less and less dense. If you're not growing, you're dying. Well, consider, how do you make a star? We have a gas cloud and it collapses, collapses. Right. to make a new object. Right. But if things continue to expand then there's an interesting sequence of events. First, there are galaxies that have already used up all their gas. Okay. They have these elliptical shapes. We call them elliptical galaxies. Oh. They don't have any gas, but they have stars that will live a trillion years. Wow. After a trillion years, those stars start dimming out one by one. They're <laughs> That's the actual sound that a star makes. <laughs> When it's yes, in gone. the vacuum of in space. In the vacuum of space. <laughs> <laughs> they will pluck out one by one trillions of years from now, because that's their life expectancy. Okay. okay. They're burning their fuel very efficiently, very oh, slowly and right. very efficiently. These are the, the, the dim red, red stars, stars, of which there are many right. in every galaxy. Right. All right. But there's no gas in the elliptical galaxies. There's no fresh generation to be made. All right. In spiral galaxies, such as ours, the Milky Way, mm -hmm. We have stars that will also live a trillion years. They'll pluck out at around the same time these other stars do, but we have residual gas. Right. So we're making stars today. Yes, stellar nurseries. Yes, yep. yes, the JWST That's it. is all up in that. Yeah. So that will only continue until there's no gas left. Right. So for a spiral galaxy, it might go another five billion years, perhaps. Oh, okay. And when we run out of gas, that's the last generation of stars to get made. You're literally out of out gas. Out of gas. <laughs> right. And that's when the universe makes this sound. <laughs> oh, by the way, in the distant future, as we continue to expand, galaxies will expand beyond the horizon that we have established from our location here. Mm -hmm. So what is that horizon? That's where they're moving away from you faster than the speed of light. So their light tries to reach you. But, but it can't. It can't. It can't. Wow. It, all the energy gets sucked out of it. And so every galaxy in the night sky will go beyond that horizon. Okay? Wow. With or without its stars, it'll go beyond the horizon. So if we look outside of our own galaxy, there'll be nothing there. Oh. As far as we know, our entire universe is just the stars living or dead in the in Milky a, Way. In the Milky Way. Oh, that's... So our entire understanding of cosmology in a post-apocalyptic civilization, in that very distant future, we'll have no idea the universe had a beginning at all because we know about the beginning by looking at other galaxies. Right. And so we... a, a page in the history of the universe will have been removed and they will not even know it. Look at that. But wait, there's more. There, there's the matter of the black holes. Okay. Okay. Interesting. Mm -hmm. All right. So the black holes, they, the small black holes, actually will evaporate. Okay. Okay, using Hawking radiation. Right. right. So just outside the event horizon, there are these spontaneous particle pairs that are formed out of their gravitational energy field. Right. And one particle escapes, the other falls in, and that effectively subtracts mass from the black hole. Okay. So we will lose those black holes in 10 to the 30th years, something like that. Okay. Uh, and around then, our best hypotheses for the survival of the proton. Okay. Okay. We think the proton might decay. If the proton decays, that's it. The proton decay, we're thinking, also happens at around 10 to the 30th years. Wow. Last I checked. Okay. It could be an up to maybe 10 to the 32 years. Right. But that's around where. I it mean, is. but who's counting? Who's counting? Who's counting? <laughs> a factor of 10 or 100. Who's factor of 10 or 100? Who's counting? When we have factors of trillions and gazillions. Right. All right. That means the structure of all matter, which is our foundation is on the nucleus composed of protons That's right. and neutrons. Right. But neutrons, free neutrons right. decay. Right. But protons are the stablest particle we know. They're gone. Right. Okay. Well, that's it. But wait, there's the supermassive black holes in the centers of galaxies. All right. 
they take longer to evaporate. That's true. They'll still be there. Right. They don't just go away just because the universe expanded every other galaxy out of the way and just because all the stars died. How about those? They take 10 to the 100 years to evaporate. Wow. You can do the math on this. No, I can't. <laughs> I'm sorry. This is what we fail to realize. You know what 10 to the 100 is? What number that is? 10 to the 100? Yeah. That's 1,000. 10 to the third power is 1,000. Yes. 10 to the 100th power? That's a Google. I did not know that. So that's a lot of years. That's beyond a lot okay, of years. Okay, that's a lot of years. Yeah. All right. So all matter is just scattered evenly into the vacuum of space, whatever's left of matter, and the universe dies. There's no more phenomenon to happen. Okay. You don't even have black holes evaporating. Right. Everything's okay? done. And the temperatures have been dropping the entire time. Early on, it was very hot. Right. It was glowing hot. Glowing hot. Right now, it's cooled to... Three degrees, absolute zero. Right. That's all, that's very cold, right. but it got even colder. Even colder. Colder, near absolute zero in the very distant future. And, okay? Uh -huh. So in that scenario, the universe will not die with a bang, but with a whimper. Mm. And not in fire, mm. but in ice. Oh, that sounds cold and lonely. <laughs> that is a cold, lonely That's ending. one scenario. Okay? So for a while, people call that the heat death of the universe. Uh -huh. But these are thermodynamicists saying that because to them there's no such thing as cold. Right. There's only there's, heat or the, the absence, absence of, heat. of heat. That's okay? it. Okay. Right. So the heat. So death, now all the heat is gone. gone so they call so it the heat, heat death. death. But that's so misleading. Exactly. So I, I just prefer to call it the big freeze. We know what's driving that. Okay. What we do know about it tells us that it is unrelenting. So it's not just an expansion that'll continue forever. Right. It's an expansion that will accelerate. Forever. Accelerate. Wow. That's forever. Crazy. Because it is a property in the vacuum of space. That's what we call dark energy. So the more the universe expands, the more vacuum you have. Right. And the weaker gravity becomes because all the matter is getting thinned Spread out. out. It's Spread getting out. thinned Spread out. It. Yeah. Okay? Like butter on hot toast. Just... All right. So you can do the math on this. So first, yes, all the galaxies will accelerate beyond your horizon. Mm -hmm. That'll happen. We got that in the first one. Okay? But here's what the difference is. If that acceleration goes unchecked, right, then it'll start ripping apart things that would otherwise retain their integrity from their gravity. Right. So first, they're galaxy clusters that even in an expanding universe, they'll want to stay together. With the accelerating expansion, they'll be it'll pulled, start no matter what. pulling them out, pulling them away. Then, once it's destroyed the galaxy cluster, now it's going to start working on the galaxies, right? which are tight, tightly bound systems of stars. As the universe continues to expand, the strength of that expansion will become greater than the binding gravity of the systems themselves. Ooh. So it'll start ripping, ripping apart, apart galaxies. galaxies. Okay. Damn. Then you don't, have, you don't have galaxy clusters. You don't have galaxies. Now you just have stars and, and their planets. It'll start plucking the planets okay. away from the stars. Home wrecker. Home. <laughs> Just a home wrecker then is what you are. It'll start ripping apart the stars, the stars, and the planets themselves. Wow. These forces are strong. Yeah. Okay. So it'll start becoming stronger than the electromagnetic forces that holds matter together. Damn. One way to imagine this is we have a rubber band. Okay. Okay. You take one end, and I'll take one end. All right. So you feel the force this is already tugging dangerous. on us, right? Go ahead. So this was originally the gravitational force that was holding galaxies together. Okay. But this dark energy broke that apart. Then there's the force of the intermolecular force. They broke that apart. Okay. But the universe is getting more and more stretched. Right. Okay. What we don't know is that, is there a limit to how much the physical universe can stretch in response to this dark energy? Okay. Because once you're down to a proton and it rips apart a proton, oh. then you're left with quarks. But then what happens, if, can, can you rip a quark apart? We, we don't know. We, right. we don't know. What? But if, then what could possibly happen is... Oh, no. Ow. No, Ow. no, no. Ow. No, no. Ouch! <laughs> <laughs> so we call this the big rip. Oh, look at that. Are you, you, I hurt you. Yeah, I'm sorry. This is look at hurt. that. Look at that. Yeah, look at that. You got like a rest I got spotter. a nice little welt. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> Contemplating the universe's end may feel distant because it is. But here on Earth... Year after year of record temps bring us a different urgency.
Is our planet inching towards uninhabitability? Well, where there should be no debate, skepticism towards science, I mean, come on, is driving a wedge into our society. Well, we are grateful for today's sponsor, Ground News, and their mission to bridge these divides. Created by a former NASA engineer, Ground News gathers worldwide related news stories in one place so readers can compare coverage. Take this article about how food prices could further increase due to climate change. You can read along at ground.news slash star talk. Just by reading this story summary, you'll see that researchers analyzed historical price and weather data from 121 countries between 1996 and 2021. Ground News not only provides you with all the outlets covering this topic, but shows you how factual each source is, as well as who's financially invested in them. And if you scroll down, you can compare headlines from different perspectives and see how certain outlets frame the story. Are we headed for catastrophe, as new scientists suggest? Or is inflation simply being driven by climate change, as The Hill says? If you want to be better informed about the potential bias in the news that you're consuming and get quick access to reliable information, make sure you subscribe to Ground News today at ground.news slash startalk and receive 40% off their vintage plan for unlimited access. That's ground.news slash star talk. All right, let's get you back to the show. So we call it the big rip and they do the calculations that'll happen in 10 to the 22 years. Oh wait. Way that's, sooner. That's much sooner than 10 to the 100. Yes. It'll happen before the black holes evaporate. Oh, I'm very worried at this point <laughs> now. I mean. That is disturbing. Okay. So long before the big freeze, the big rip will just go ahead and pull it's everything still, apart. It'll be still pretty cold by right, then, yeah, but yeah. yeah. I lay awake at night wondering what that would be. Because it rips, and what's in the rip? Yeah, what's yeah. What what's what's there? I'm trying to figure out what's going to be left. Now, third and last, Okay. there's no data to support this next idea. Okay. There's nothing to tell us that we will ever recollapse. Okay. Because our expansion speed is greater than anything the collective gravity of all galaxies could possibly muster Okay, to try to bring it back. Right, right. All right, so, but if something gets discovered that will slow down the expansion and then have us recollapse, mm. then everything will happen sort of in reverse. The universe will get hotter and hotter and hotter. Right. Instead of cooler and cooler. Things will get more and more concentrated. <laughs> and ultimately, We'd all come back to the same point. A same singularity. And they call that the big crunch. But that implies that things are like crackers. Right. If you take a fistful crack there. But I think it's really the big squeeze. Ooh. To me, that's a more right. accurate yes. term. The big squeeze. Now, the whole universe becomes the size of an atom again. And if you look at the quantum physics of this, once you're in the quantum realm... You can like tunnel. All bets are off. All bets, you can tunnel. You can tunnel out. You can tunnel out. Yep. Okay? And all that energy and all that matter in one place, Right. It's got. there's only one thing it can do, and that's Let's expand. It's Once bad. again, into another <laughs> big bang. Big bang. Big bang number whatever. Right, yeah. right. These are scenarios, all of which will happen long after we're dead. Which is why I'm not going to worry about it. <laughs> I'm just saying. Yeah. The stuff that will kill us Long before Long this before it is, yes. Okay, we'll be running for the hills as the sea levels rise. Yes, with, I was going to say. Climate change, the, right. the next virus where nobody wants to get vaccinated. Exactly. kill all of them off. We're not making it out of the next century. <laughs> let alone have to worry about any of this stuff. <laughs> and you know what worries me most? Is ask anybody in the year 1900 what they fear the greatest. Right. In, in terms of the survival of our species. They'll say population. They'll say Consumption, right? The tuberculosis. I've got the consumption. Yeah. <laughs> They'll say things that aren't even on our list Not, today. We don't, the stuff that's on our list, they didn't even know about don't that. Even back. Think about. Back, it. They don't even know that yeah. it was something to think about. Exactly. Uh, so in the year twenty one hundred, I don't fear what we fear today. Yeah, people won't be worried about cancer. I fear what we don't yet know to worry. Right. And I fear what we do know to worry, which is us. See? We being awful shepherds of our own fate. There you go. 
like, yeah, just we are terrible stewards of the future because we are terrible stewards of the present. Ooh. And that's what I fear. Ooh. Yeah. All right. On that happy <laughs> note, <laughs> have a nice day. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> All right. These are the ways the world would end. <laughs> With Neil and Chuck, <laughs> a fireside chat. <laughs> Sleep tight. Sleep well. <laughs> Sleep well, people. <laughs> oh, God. That's All wonderful. Right. This is yet another Star Talk explainer video brought to you from my office yeah. at the Hayden Planetarium right here at the American Museum of Natural History. Mm -hmm. Until next time, as always, keep looking up. <laughs>